Well, hey, friends and clients. My name is Dan Foster, and I'm the Chief Operating Officer and an Executive Coach here at Building Champions. And today, I have the privilege of speaking with one of our great Executive Coaches, Marta Tween. Marta, it's great to be with you. Likewise, Dan. Yeah. Now, Marta, you're an ICF professional certified coach, and you're working towards your master coach certification. That's pretty impressive. That just means like you're a boss coach, like you're one of the best out there. You're certified. You've dedicated a lot of your professional career to being an amazing coach, right? Yes, it's my passion. Then it is. Yes. <laughs> yeah, you bet. You bet. Well, I love what you bring to the Building Champions team. And I love what you bring to our clients. So thank you for being with us here today. And we're going to be talking about strength-based feedback conversations for leaders. And we know here at Building Champions that this is, you know, after 25 years of coaching people, this is really essential for leaders to help to create just a, a healthy team environment where people can grow, they can develop. And they can hear from their leader uh, when it comes to feedback. And so, Marta, I, I know using strength, a strengths-based approach to really all aspects of leadership, it's, it's not only a passion area for you uh, in your coaching, but like I mentioned, you're, you're like a certified trainer in this area and you bring real expertise for us. So I'm excited to learn more about this today from you. Uh, me too. I'm very excited. Strengths is incredible. You know, it using, is using our strengths is what makes us happy. Yes, that's exactly right. Um, okay, so I've got a few questions. I'm just going to kind of do this mm -hmm. as an interview style, ask you questions. You can share your expertise, and let's just have a nice conversation here. So, when when we talk about a leader doing anything that's strengths based, mm -hmm. what exactly do we mean, Marta, by the idea of strengths? Help me to understand that just a little bit more. Well, when we focus on strengths, we can expect to get the best outcomes from people because yeah. we're doing what we like and what we are very well equipped to do and to shine and just to, uh, to flow with whatever yeah. asked of us. So okay. the approach is focus on strengths and put your energy there rather than trying to correct weaknesses because yes. that will give you lot less returns on your investment okay. of effort and time. That's yeah, yeah, that's, yeah, okay. So it's focusing more on your natural giftings and strengths mm -hmm. and less on maybe trying to be like someone else in a strength area that you don't have or focusing in on, I just got to get better at all my weaknesses. Um, I, I remember learning that as a leader and it was sort of an aha moment for me when I learned that, that I don't need to be like everybody else. And I don't need to focus on my weaknesses as much as I need to focus on my strengths. So um, how did you come to really like find this as a passion for you? What was like the, the impetus for it? Well, um, I was, I was invited to uh, a role uh, that I didn't really have all the experience for it, but yeah. I had all the all the the strengths for it. So uh, I I was uh, kind of um, impressed and and very thankful to have yeah. the opportunity to be. I was the VP of uh, organizational development and culture, and that okay. included for for a, a holding company, multinational mm -hmm. company. And uh, I was asked uh, my boss, how come you're hiring me when you had stronger candidates? And, and he said, because they do not have your strengths. Ah. Now, wow. So <laughs> there I, 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 I started to, to learn about this world um, uh -huh. since, uh, for about, it's almost been 20 years since I got to yeah. know. It. And uh, I, what fascinates me is everyone has a unique set of strengths. Okay. Uh, I don't know. Uh, for for me, it is uh, first is war, which yes. is uh, winning people over. That's what it means. Uh, okay. It is, I just thrive when I'm together with people, and I like to people. Yes. I like people to feel really, really comfortable and and uh, happy in the environment that I 
I can create for them. The, yeah. the, the second one is uh, positivity. So, okay. yes, uh, and maximizer. I, uh -huh. A, a very strong one for me also and then uh i have achiever and futuristic uh, okay and what are yours then i'm curious to hear. yeah well so thank you because i you you encouraged me to to look up my strengths and i went to the clifton strengths and i i did the whole assessment it was wonderful so for me i'm a relator um that that's my mm -hmm. first one We're very similar to you i think with the woo and that i love being with people i love relating to them i love connecting with them and i love working together with people to achieve things so that's number one for me and then i'm also communication i'm an activator i'm a maximizer and then belief is big for me so having purpose having intentionality having a core set of values and that really drive me and help me to want to achieve things. But I think I've learned that one of my strengths is working with people to achieve things. I, I don't mind doing things on my own, but man, I would much prefer as a leader to be working with people striving towards a vision. So that's what I learned when I kind of started going through my strengths. So yes, and um, I, I love this, uh, Dan, and I can I can feel the effect of your of your strengths. Luckily, we're <laughs> both in building champions. And yeah. this is why you 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 drive in these interviews because you have communication and you like to connect, yeah. and uh, it's just so natural for you. It just flows. So that is why Thank I, you. you know, I, I I knew that you had that relator in you also. Yeah. And um, and the and the maximizer is the only one we have in common. So yes. that uh, also it uh, well, I mean, from the top five. But yeah. um, that is what connects me with you, that we always strive to make things better. That's right. That's right. Excellent. So, Marta, I, I, I see when, um, when someone knows this, when a leader knows this, um, and they understand their strengths, and I can see where it would help them to, to just be a better leader. Like, I've grown understanding my strengths, and it's helped me to know the type of work I should be involved in and the type of work I should allow others to do, right? But help me to understand why is it important for a leader to understand not only their own strengths, but then the strengths of their team members? Why is that important? Yes. Well, um, if you use your strengths uh, rather, you know, than uh, what somebody else is doing, that is probably mm -hmm. not your strengths, to, uh, to lead to give feedback, then it will come more genuine, more, more um, sincere and also okay. more natural. And the person will feel more relaxed. But when you, on top of that, you also are aware of the strengths of your team members, then mm -hmm. you can uh, tailor that feedback according to their set. So I'm talking uh, okay. about the top five uh, strengths and in Clifton Stress, we have 34. I don't, I don't know you. Okay. Yeah. 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 I saw, I'm looking at my sheet here and I see, <laughs> yep, I've got 30, 34 of them there. So all of, all of us have those, but they are just in a different order. So the ranking of those strengths okay. makes us so unique. So uh, there is only another person with your first, same set of strengths uh, than in 278,000 people, more or less. Yeah. But if we want to have the, the top five in the same ranking order, we need 33 million. So Ooh. it really <laughs> makes you, you. it's so unique to use your fingerprint. Yeah. So okay. I, I think that is when you discover what you are really at the core, then you can be at your best, no matter what you do. Awesome. Okay. Okay. So it's great for a leader to understand that. But then if I know the people that I'm leading, if I understand how th what their unique strengths are, mm -hmm. uh, then I can empower them the right way and I can lean on them and trust them uh, to, to do certain type of work that's in their strength zone. Uh, and then if, I, if, they're, if we're experiencing frustration, it may be mm -hmm. um, a, a sign that we're asking them to do something that's not just in their natural strength zone, if you will. So. Okay, yeah. so that's that's sort of clicking for me. I understand it. So yeah. let's now add the feedback. Let's let's talk about yeah. feedback here because this is a struggle for a lot of leaders <laughs> to give just candid, good feedback where someone walks away feeling like 
uh, uplifted and encouraged and they've got clarity about what they need to do to improve, that's tough for leaders. A lot of people walk away going, what the heck was that all about? And, <laughs> you know, where did that come from? So tell yeah. me, why do leaders, why do we struggle so much to give like good feedback? Uh, in my experience, um, coaching leader for many years, I've seen that uh, leaders, when they give feedback, they get nervous because they have to, you know, also cover the areas of opportunity. So yeah. forgetting, it's all about growth. It's all about being better. And they're probably more worried about what happened in the past than mm. what can be in the future. So I think that uh, okay. should be forward thinking. That's one of the things. Yeah. Yeah. Yes. Okay. So that's good. Um, we tend to dwell in the past, don't we, sometimes with feedback instead of saying, okay, this happened, or this is how we've been experiencing you, but we see that you could be so much more. We see that you could be doing this better work. So let's talk yeah. about what we see is possible in your strength zone. Yes. Uh, and, and let's move from current reality to what we, what we see as a strength for you. Okay. That's good. I haven't thought about that. I, you know, I, I often do probably in my feedback sessions tend to focus a little bit on the past, um, yeah probably too much rather than focusing on the future. So, okay. So when we think about strengths based feedback, what are some of the benefits? Like why a leader that's watching and listening today, why should they explore getting their strengths identified, helping their team to understand their strengths and then using this in a feedback approach? Like what are the benefits for a leader? Do you think? When you can tailor that, the, per, uh, the, the, the feedback to the person's strengths, the person will feel that they can do it. They, they will feel empowered mm. and better equipped to make the change. Okay. Even they could get uh, creative decide, helping us decide what is next, what is the next step so we can really see a shift for the better. Yeah. Okay, great. Great. Love it. Love it. Okay. So you shared with me that you've got some tips for leaders as they're using strengths based approach to feedback. Um, so I'd love to hear you said you got five tips for us um, that you want to share today. And so I've got a pen and a paper, I'm going to be writing these down. Okay. So uh, <laughs> if you don't mind, let's let's just hear what are some tips for leaders as they as they want to start using this when it comes to feedback. Okay. Yes. Okay. Uh, one big thing with feedback is the time. Is the time. We don't need yeah. to wait for the mid-year review. We yes. Because every opportunity is an opportunity to learn, and mm -hmm. when you align the intention to uh, helping somebody learn and grow, then every moment is a good feedback moment. So that's the okay, first good. thing. The first thing. The second, yeah. is, like I already mentioned, it needs to be future oriented, right? So mm -hmm. less stress over the occurrence and more stress about how will we make it better next time? That's okay. the second one. Uh, so timely, future oriented. The okay. third one is tailored to the person receiving feedback. For instance, if somebody mm -hmm. uh, was more in the uh, analytic, we're gonna mm -hmm. give the person more data supporting the feedback so they can relate to it better and they understand yeah. it better. But but say the person does not have uh, that analytic, they yeah. have something like empathy. So we're going to understand them better and make them feel like we okay. really understand where they're coming from. So they will open up to the feedback in a better way. Okay. So that's number Love three. It tailor to the person's set of strengths. And the other one, um, consider your own, right? So for instance, my strength is, I, one of them is positivity, like I said. So yeah, it would be for me a struggle to give negative feedback. So what I try to do is keep in mind this, it's for somebody's growth and that growth and learning is always positive. So. I try to rely more on a maximizer, which is ex strive for excellence and make something even better than what it already is. So yeah. the person will shine. And that's how I use my set. So I am very aware of my set of strengths when I get feedback. Okay, and the great. last one is transform all of these reviews into opportunities for 
uh, development? Like, what do you okay. see in the future? What do you see yes. for yourself in the future? And that way, the person will uh, also uh, start to walk towards that career path that they have. How can we use your strengths for that? And that um, that is a co-creation of the of the action plan. Yeah. Okay. Love that. Love that. I, I think the one that I'm most guilty of not doing is the one where you said it was it, it's in the moment. Like, don't wait for the performance review, you know, at the mid-year point or at the end of the year. It's like if there's an opportunity to give feedback, do it right then and there. Um, in the appropriate setting, of course, right? But yeah, but don't wait and and then because I've heard I've felt this way before is when a leader comes into a feedback session and they're like, six months ago, this happened, three months ago, this happened. And it's like, why didn't you tell me then? I could have been improving and developing right. to to be better today. Now I've got right. uh, you know another three months that I've got to work on this or something. So right. uh so thank well, you. Th those five. Oh yeah, go ahead. The, sorry, the other thing that might happen is but they might not remember the specific occasion. We yes. the specific examples to illustrate. Why are we speaking about this anyways? You know, <laughs> why is this important? Because we might have not clarified that point. So That's right. once, once uh, if we wait too long, then that might no longer be something they remember or that might no longer be relevant. So we yes. lost a chance for somebody to use their strengths towards uh, shining. Wonderful. That's great, Marta. Okay, thank you so much. Um, Marta, if someone wants to coach with you, do you bring this strengths into your coaching? Like if they said, hey, Marta, that really resonated with me. I want to coach with you. Can you help them get the strengths-based assessment and then yes. kind of coach them around these strengths? Does that work for you in your coaching? Yes, I, I do. And I coached uh, many people on their strengths. Yeah. And uh, uh, somebody who who wants to expand that, not only to be a better leader themselves, but to learn how to lead each one of their team members, then I love doing that work with someone. Yeah, I know you that, do, and you're you're great at it. <laughs> so <laughs> yes, that, and also I love to coach teams because they learn yeah. how to complement each other with their set of strengths. So what each one brings to the table is different. So yes. uh, they might be of great value to the team, if we yep. learn to observe what each one, um, what each set of strengths is. About. Yeah, exactly. I mean, that's what creates a high performing team, right? Where we've got everyone understands their role, their strengths, they're coming together around a shared vision and purpose. So I'd love that you have the ability both to work with individuals and teams, Marta. That's great. So Yes. Marta, thank you for being with us today. I really yeah. appreciate it. Thank you. Uh, if you're, if you're, you bet, if you're watching this and you want to know more about Marta and how she helps leaders like you just create amazing cultures where people receive strengths based feedback, or if you just want to know more about your own strengths, like I did, check mm -hmm. out our website at buildingchampions.com and connect with Marta on LinkedIn. Uh, she, she is active on social media. And the other thing to know about Marta, Marta, you speak a couple of different languages. You're not, English isn't your only language that you speak. So tell us what other right. languages you speak in yeah. case someone says, man, I have someone else on my team that I want to connect with you and they speak a different language. Which languages do you speak? I, I speak uh, Spanish is my native language and maybe everybody here detected that. <laughs> <laughs> but, uh, I'm a, but yeah, I, I speak both uh, very fluently and I also speak German quite well. I have a Excellent. proficiency level German and I'm learning Italian. Okay. That's wow. my, my new uh, passion, Great. learning Italian is very, is lots of fun, but that is, I'm, I'm a beginner in Italian, but the other, That's okay. the other two, lang uh, three languages, then I can, I can coach in those three. Yeah. Languages. English, Spanish, German. That's awesome. That is two more than what I can do. So good for you. That's awesome. Um, okay, folks. So great being with you, Marta. Thank you for watching, everyone. If you want to know more about working with Marta and strengths-based uh, coaching and leadership, please uh, just connect with us and we'll be happy to set up a, a, a discovery call with you and Marta. Marta, have a wonderful week. It's been great talking yes. with you. Likewise, Dan. Thank you so much for inviting me. You bet. All right, bye.